Hello everyone. So one day when I was at the store shopping for some more crafting supplies, I came across this cool fishbowl shaped vase. It only cost me about $3, and as the thumbnail suggests, we will be turning this into a small aquarium. First we will start by laying in the substrate. You can use sand and gravel, but today I will be using some volcano rock pellets. This aquatic soil is rich in minerals which will help promote plant growth, but also beneficial to shrimp should we choose to add any. I will add in the soil until it fills up only about one third of the vase. Since we are using volcanic soil, it makes sense that we use some lava rocks for our decoration. We will use them to build these little triangle structures. You can glue them together using some super glue or some hot glue. When building them, be sure to leave a good sized gap in the middle. It is these gaps that we will use to hold in our plants. Now that I have one complete, let's go ahead and make the rest. I like gluing them together corner to corner. And again, remember to leave that gap in the middle. With our small structures built, we can then put these extra rocks away to the side to use for later. Now to firmly dig our structures into the soil but not too rough, otherwise we will break apart our pellets. Then to scatter around a few loose pieces of rock. With that ready, I will now be showing you the type of water I will be using and what is exactly in it. Here we have a cup of aged water. If you're wondering what aged water is, it's exactly what you're thinking. Basically old water. This water came out of a tank that houses all of my aquatic plants and snails and has been circulating for over six months. Now aside from the snail, this water also contains good bacteria and these tiny crustacean creatures known as coat pods. These little guys are basically the springtails of the water world. They help break down waste and are also signs of a healthy environment. Now I know not all of us have a bunch of old water just sitting around, so I'll show you how I prepare my water so that you can get started. I like to use a mixture of water that I call half and half which is a mixture of half tap water and half distilled water. If for whatever reason you don't have access to distilled water, rain water works just as good. Just don't scoop it up off the ground. And after we've mixed the two, we will let it sit for 24 hours. After 24 hours, I will now add in my aged water that contained my copods. With our water set, we will now begin to add in our aquatic plants. Here we have three different types of plants. Here we have some Eleocaris grass, some anarchists, and some hornwort plant. All of these are clippings from a bigger version of the plant, which means once we plant them, they will start to root and continue to grow. Now to plant these in our little crevices that we left in our structures, and also in a bit of loose soil. Thank you. 
I did struggle a bit to get the hornwort in between the rocks. But eventually I was able to set it in. Or at least I thought I did. Because as I was adding the other pieces, I guess I must have shook up the soil too much and... Yeah, that happened. But once I got that put back in, I went ahead and started adding in the bits of grass. I know it may seem a little empty right now, but eventually the plants will start to grow to the point where they're going to need some maintenance and clipping. And not to carefully add in our little friend the snail. Our little snail friend seems to be enjoying his new home, and I can see the coal pods start to form around the glass. However, we're not done just yet because there is one more species of plant that I would like to add to this tank. Here we have a good bit of java moss. This one does not require planting, but I will be holding it down using this. A small piece of waterlogged driftwood. I was sure to sterilize it first by boiling it and then leaving it in water for over a day because if you decide to add it in dry, it will just flow to the surface. As I was adding in the java moss, you can see that I accidentally ended up uprooting one of the plants. I decided to leave that part in to show you that you need to really dig those plants into the soil to keep that from happening. And here you can see our piece of wood still had a bit of buoyancy left to it. Eventually it'll sink on its own, or you could just use a rock to help hold it down. This rock ended up looking a bit too big, so I decided to swap it out for a smaller one. And that concludes setting up our little tank. All that's left to do now is to introduce our little friend to his new home. Here we have an adorable, but also funny looking, African Dwarf Frog. These species of frogs are fully aquatic, which means they will spend their entire lives in only water, although they will occasionally come to the surface for some air. They are a peaceful and non-aggressive species of frog. They will get along with other African Dwarf Frogs and most species of fish, which is why they are popular and you might find them in several people's fish tanks. But other than the freshwater snail, this little guy will have this new home all to himself. So let's go ahead and add him in. Now I did acclimate him to the water conditions before he went in. But I did start to get a bit worried when I saw that he was just floating there. And he didn't react too much even after I nudged him a little bit. But after leaving him alone for a few minutes, he eventually swam down to the bottom and began exploring his new home. Maybe he just needed a moment or two to take it all in. Who knows? They will swim around from time to time, but most of the time you'll just find them frozen in place. Like if they were stuck in deep thought or trying to complete the mannequin challenge or something. Now if you're ever worried about them or just don't like seeing still water, you can add in a small air stone to help get the water moving a bit. If you do, be sure to use a tiny one, because as you can see, this one ended up being a bit too much. Luckily my air pump is adjustable, so I was able to regulate the amount of air coming out of the tube. Now whether you decide to add in an air stone or not, these guys are happy just as long as they are well fed and the water is kept clean. 
Now to admire our work as we take a quick tour around the bowl. I think it looks great, but I can't wait to see what it will look like a few months from now once the plants have grown out a bit. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more future habitat builds and animal related content. So thanks for watching, and as always, this has been Reptile Amore, and I will see you guys on the next one.